That was Alberta Premier Jason Kenney speaking on Friday. Now, the first person to launch her leadership campaign to re replace Jason Kenney was Danielle S Smith. She was speaking with reporters and party faithful at her launch on Thursday. For five years, Ms. Smith was the leader of Alberta's Wild Rose Party. In 2014, she led a floor crossing of Wild Rose MLAs to join the Progressive Conservative government of Jim Prentice. It was the first time in uh, Canadian political history that an official opposition had joined a serving government. Danielle Smith joins me now from High River, Alberta. Ms. Smith, thanks for joining us. My pleasure. Hi, Martin. Uh, first question, why do you want to run for this leadership now? Well, I, I have to say, I mean, we I was one of the first who wanted to see the Conservative uni, uh, Party unified again when, when Jim Prentice came back to Alberta. It was a very unpopular decision to try to bring those two parties together. And ultimately, it was a failure. Both of us got, got crushed politically as a result. But I, but I think with the passage of time, now that we've seen that the two parties came together the right way with Brian Jean and Jason Kenney, no one is keen to see it blow apart again. With the, uh, the opposition NDP united, they've been polling around 40 to 44 percent. I think we now all understand in the conservative movement here that if the two parties bust apart again, that we're very likely to see another NDP government. I, I'm, I'm sure that was one of the factors for why Brian Jean decided he wanted to jump back in. It's certainly the factor for why I decided I wanted to jump back in. I want to make sure that I can be a voice to try to keep these parties unified as we prepare for the next election. Okay, that's interesting because in your answer, you've just actually gone out ahead of the other question. That was many Albertans still to this day consider that a betrayal. They call it the grand betrayal. When you did that part mm. of that floor crossing, you sort of alluded to it. What do you do to get them over that perception? That's got to be you. It's got to be the elephant in the room that you have to get over people's uh, anger at that that move all those years ago. Well, you know, my uh, my caucus and I at the time, we thought that we were starting a process of merger. Obviously, you can't merge from the top. Merging always has to be done from the bottom, from the from the grassroots up. And obvious, and the, the, the grassroots didn't want us to do it at that time. But they came around to wanting that once they saw that the split in the two parties resulted in an, an NDP election. So, hey, look, I, I've had a life since I left politics. I was on uh, the air for six years. My first couple of months on talk radio were a little bit rough, but I had three hours a day, uh, five days a week to talk through with Albertans about all of the issues that I cared about. I didn't run away. I, uh, I took my lumps mm -hmm. and I wanted to continue to be a voice of positivity and trying to, to find some of the answers for Alberta. So I've won over a lot of people. I still have a little bit of work to do with those who are still mad at me, but I'm, I'm pretty confident okay. going into this that people will understand the reasons why I'm, I'm jumping in back in now. Okay, you made an allusion to you don't want to see the party split asunder or split again. Uh, a lot of people would describe the party, the UC, uh, UCP, as, as profoundly uh, divided right now. I mean, only 51.4% gave the premier, uh, endorsed his leadership style and his leadership. Uh, what do you do to get people over their anger about whatever it is they're angry about and weigh in on what you think that is. You know, the, the Premier has a lot of things that I, I've supported. I think he's done a tremendous job of representing Alberta on the national and international stage. He just came back from Washington. He's got a very strong message about how Alberta's any energy sector is going to develop, including a hydrogen economy, as well as uh, re achieving net zero in, in our oil sands development. So he, I think, has done a really great job on that. I have a, a lot of a background in the energy sector advocating for it, so I want to be able to continue that work on. Where, where he, I think ended up misstepping with members was that he, he promised up and down that there would not be vaccine mandates, vaccine passports, and then he flip-flopped on that. And that left, I think, a lot of hurt feelings among those who trusted him. The other part is that we, we really do need to get rolling on trying to find a way to follow on Quebec's path of taking more control over our own areas of provincial jurisdiction. The federal government came through with a bill, Bill C-69, that was uh, four to one in the courts last week. The Court of Appeal said was an, uh, an invasion of provincial jurisdiction and would essentially gut our ability to make our own decisions on our own resource development. And as a result, people are wanting to see us push back against Ottawa's intrusion in our affairs. The premier was not seen to be pushing back hard enough. And I, I can tell you okay. that that will be one of the core things I campaign on. And I suspect it will be one of the factors in this upcoming race. OK, a lot of people watching from around the country uh, in, in watching the conservative movement uh, around the country are watching. And you alluded to it. There have been a lot of very radical anti-government voices uh, that sort of have sprung up, uh, partly provoked or partly 
the catalyst being partly the, those vaccine mandates and things like that. But there are a lot of people who are profoundly angry and anti-government. You mm -hmm. describe yourself as libertarian, but this, this mm -hmm. kind of anger that's afoot, uh, many people are saying is going to be a challenge to any conservative party. Uh, what do you do to try and tame people who are just so very, very angry at all government? I think that we we shouldn't mischaracterize what the what the movement is about. I've been to a number of these freedom groups, and I can tell you the typical person who comes out is a mom in her 30s or 40s, um, who was uh, who can't, who can't believe that their entire lives have been disrupted in the last couple of years. There's a lot of people who just want to be left alone. They want to be able to raise their kids and go see them at hockey games, take them on camping trips, maybe go on a plane and see grandma and grandpa, and not be threatened with losing their jobs because they've decided not to take a medical procedure. So. I, I think that the the fact is the government just stepped uh, overstepped what most people thought, and as a result, it was it, 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 we have a huge pushback against it. So I I don't know that I would uh, characterize it as as radical. I think people just want to get back okay. to living their normal lives. Last question, thirty second question, uh, and that is your most probably your biggest competitor is going to be Brian Jean, who has already said mm -hmm. that he's going to be running. Uh, he's he was your successor as a leader of the Wild Rose Party. What uh, in thirty seconds? What would distinguish you from Brian Jean? I'm glad both Brian and I are back in because I, I think both of us want to bring that grassroots perspective and the respect for the role of the individual MLA. That was a really strong tradition in the Wild Rose. And by, by come, both of us coming back in, I'm really hopeful that others will jump into the race as well so that we can broaden it out. We're seeing at the federal level a really robust race with very different ideas. And that's, I think, what's going to be exciting about a leadership contest is, is it allows everyone to paint their vision of what Alberta should be. Okay, Daniel Smith, we'll probably speak again. I want to wish you a good campaign. We'll be watching uh, with interest as things unfold in Alberta. Thanks so much.